Hello. I have two things I want to talk about, but obviously most of you are going to be more interested in what is that dark spot? More interested in huh? More interested in Earl than anything else I have to say. So I'm gonna get rid of that first. Um, no surprise, the grand jury did in fact return a true bill. Um, is that a good thing? Uh, contrary to Earl's belief, that is not a good thing. Number one, that means that nine out of 12 people at a minimum thought that there was probable cause for the arrest. That there is probable cause for the prosecution. That's not good for Earl. Um, it would obviously be much better for Earl if nine out of 12 grand jurors thought that there was nothing there. That would obviously be a much better thing for Earl. Um, and it doesn't really matter which way you slice it. Unfortunately for someone in Earl's position, there will always be people who think that he got away with it. You have to remember that um, O.J. Simpson had a full trial. He went through the whole shebang all the way to a jury verdict of not guilty. And people still think he's guilty. I still think he's guilty. Um, there's never going to be satisfying everybody as far as your guilt or innocence is concerned. So, um, Earl's, Earl being happy that it's going to trial is silly. Uh, he's not. His, his lawyer's not. Uh, it's going to cost Earl a lot of money to take this all the way through trial. It'll probably cost him... I'd be surprised if it cost him 10 grand. I'd be, uh, I'd be thinking more in like the, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 grand, maybe 25. I don't think lawyers are as expensive in that particular area as they are out here in California, but who knows? So it is not a good thing. Obviously the, uh, the likelihood that Earl will be found guilty increases exponentially on a finding of, or on, on the return of an indictment, as opposed to the return of a no bill. So now that we have that out of the way, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, 1983 lawsuits and damages. I'm, I'm told that, uh, you know, by all the non-attorneys that Selena has a great case and were her rights violated? Maybe. I don't know. I didn't watch the video. Uh, but there's there, there are a lot of hurdles between having your rights violated or believing that your rights were violated and actually getting money in your hand. Hurdle number one is it has to be a clearly established right. Number two, uh, the officer couldn't have a good faith belief that the state law was different. And that's, I mean, we're getting, we're getting into the nitty gritty of facts, but that's, that's something that you're gonna have to overcome. Obviously the first thing the officer is gonna try to do is the officer is going to try to get it um, dismissed based on qualified immunity. But once you get past that, if you get past that, he still has, he still got some defenses before he has to pay off. And then let's say, let's say that you go and you, you actually prove that, you know, he, he knew or should have known that he was violating your rights and he didn't have a good faith belief that state law was different. Then you have to prove damages. You, you have to prove damages. They don't let you just assume damages. They're not, oh, well, for a violation of your Fourth Amendment, right, you get $400,000. For a violation of your Fifth Amendment, right, you get $500,000. It's not like that. You actually have to prove that you, well, there's there's two basic kinds of, uh, of damages. Uh, there's compensatory damages, which an auditor is going to have a, a shit time trying to prove. They're going to have to prove that it cost them money to be arrested. That they lost time. That they lost 
wages, that economically there was an impact. Um, they may be able to they may be able to prove general damages that they may try to anyway that you know there was some psychological emotional pain psychological pain um, there was a a blow to their reputation etc but auditors uh, auditors are going to have a hard time proving compensatory damages because they make money off getting arrested and that shit's that shit is going to come out. In discovery they make money off it not only monetizing the video but in the donations that pour in that otherwise but for getting arrested wouldn't have come in and they don't have like Selena doesn't have a job I mean what the fuck what what wages is she losing getting arrested in I think she was out of state what what wages did she lose um, what emotional toll did it take if any I mean she's an auditor I mean, this might be just a day at the a day at the office for her. so she's gonna have difficulty with that she may just get nominal damages and nominal damages could be a dollar like yeah they violated your rights here's a dollar because they didn't it didn't actually cost you anything and that can happen punitive punitive damages number one you got to collect on you have to get something in the form of compensatory before you get punitive it might just be nominal but you got to get something if you get actual compensatory damages I believe that about 10 times compensatory damages is what you're limited to as far as punitive damages are concerned and you actually have to prove that either it was an intentional thing or it was uh, reckless that like the officer was reckless in disregarding you know your rights etc there's there there is an element of proof there that you have to go into so it's not like oh I got I got damn compensatory damages now I get punitive now if you get nominal damages then I think your uh, punitive damages essentially unlock although there is a there is a uh, constitutional prohibition against excessive fines so you know there is always a challenge for that. Uh, some states, the uh, the judge can and will. In some territories, some uh, some jurisdictions, the judge can and will overturn a uh, jury verdict of damages of awarding damages um, based on it being uh, exceeding what the judge thinks is fair. That's called a judgment, notwithstanding the verdict. Uh, if you've waived the jury trial, then the judge may or may not give you damages, punitive damages, or compensatory damages. I mean, it'd be the judge making the decision, not a jury. And, you know, will the jury like auditors? Odds are no. Odds are the jury will not. Because the public tends not like auditors. So there's a there's a whole lot of there's a lot of hurdles to face. Now with that said, I want to point to you, or point you to, uh, the, the general behavior of auditors when they get in one of these situations, and they get an attorney, and they file a lawsuit, and next thing you know, they're settling. And now you're asking yourself, why are they settling? I'm going to tell you why they're settling. It's because, it's because the lawyer... And I'm guessing this is this is my my working theory. The lawyer is going to look at all these factors, and the lawyer is going to say, "Well, you know, you don't have a job, so compensatory damages not very good. You didn't go to the hospital. You don't have any ongoing medicals. Um, you went out there looking to bait the police into this. I mean, they're just." There's just a lot of negative factors as far as getting compensatory damages, and it's going to be hard to prove that the officer uh, did this, in, intended to violate the, your constitutional rights, or was reckless in regards to your constitutional rights. It's going to be hard to prove that, and a jury might not go for it, and even if they do go for it, they might not give you a lot of money because you baited, I mean, you were complicit in it. You baited the officer. 
and or the judge might might uh, reduce the award because judges can do that. I mean, there's all sorts of there's all sorts of things that can happen, and so the attorney will tell these auditors who do get in a situation where their rights were violated, but damages are very uncertain to go ahead and settle. Because when a city is looking at settling or a state is looking at settling, a police department, sheriff's department, whatever, when they're looking at settling, they're looking at the cost to them in what they will have to spend on their attorney. And they, they say, well, we might as well settle it by basically just giving what we would spend on the attorney to this dude who's claiming his rights were violated and just done. And they don't have to speculate on what a jury will do at that point either. So that is, that is my best analysis of why auditors settle. 99 times out of 100. I don't know of any that have taken it to jury trial. So, there you go. All the way to a jury verdict, anyway. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.